All right, so that break sure was refreshing. So now let's meet our next set of speakers for our Figma crash course. So first, we have Nicole Tang. She is from 4BFA Information Design, and she is also our AVP for design training. She is a product design intern at Sprout Solutions Incorporated. And we also have Aidan Olarte from 2BS ITE. He is the, uh, the AVP for Design Mentorship here at UX Society, and he is also an AVP for UX and UI at Byte. So, Nicole and Aidan, please take it away. All right. So, hello, everyone. Okay. So, let's just wait for Aidan to share screen. Yeah. Okay, ayan. All right. <laughs> ayan. Okay, ayan. So, hello everyone. Welcome to the Figma part of the workshop. So, sana okay pa naman kayo ngayon. And, mas ready na kayo after that break. So, marami talagang na-share si Rafa ngayon. And, hopefully, ayan, okay pa kayo after that. And, marami kayong natutunan. So, if okay pa kayo, send naman some heart reacts dyan. <laughs> so, guys. Ayan. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so nice to see that you guys are still doing fine because we are going to be discussing a lot here, but we're going to try our best to definitely keep it as easy to understand as much as we can para di naman kayo ma info overload. So, all right, so maybe before we begin, um, introduce lang namin, yung sali namin again. So, hello, my name is Nicole and I'm from 4BFA ID and I'm also your AVP for design training. I've actually been a member of Youth Society for like two years already, but this year lang ako naging active. So ayun, uh, maybe Aiden, you can go ahead and introduce yourself as well first before yeah. we start. Yeah. Of course. Thanks, Nicole. So yeah. Hi, hey, everyone. I'm Aiden Alarte from 2BS IT, your AVP for Design Mentorship this year at UXSoc. And um, budding designer and hoping to inspire everyone else to be a design leader today at this, this today's workshop. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Wow naman. <laughs> All right. Sige, sige. All right. So, let us move on dun sa next part. So, ano ba yung mangyayari dito sa workshop natin? All right. Sige, Aidan. Okay, move dun sa next. Ayun. So, we'll be showing you the Figma ropes. Yan yung first thing na mangyayari ngayon. Tapos, feel free lang to ask questions dun sa chat. So, after nun, we'll be doing an activity later to apply what you've learned. Pero we're going to be doing it like asynchronously na lang since ayun, yung time natin is limited. And then, feel free na lang to take this file home with you in case you get lost like in the middle of our um, session. Kasi baka, ano, parang especially if you guys are so new, baka, you know, may mga learning curve and stuff. So, if ever you guys get lost, that's totally fine. Um, this file is here for you. And also, this um, session is going to be on YouTube, on New Society's YouTube as well. So if ever you get lost, it's totally fine. You can definitely um, check it out after the workshop once again. All right. And then for today's agenda, here, dito sa talk namin ni Aidan. Ayun. So yung first part is yung Figma landing page, or not necessarily landing page, but like the moment you log into your um, Figma. Ayun, the moment you log into Figma, yan yung unang mong makikita. And then after that, it's going, we're going to be talking about the Figma workspace. Then, designing with Figma. And then lastly, we'll be doing an activity. Ayan. All right. So, next part, maybe before we start, sorry, before we start, um, everyone, please duplicate the file. I think events will be sharing it here in the chat, or perhaps Aiden will be sharing it in the chat also. <laughs> Ayan. All right. Sige, sige. All right. Let's us just wait <laughs> for a bit where you guys can also um play around with the whatever we're um, discussing as well. Because uh, my time there before at na everybody was on the same file. It was like crash. So ngayon we'll be doing it. Um, everyone can just duplicate their own file and then follow along. Na lang. So ayun, Aiden has already dropped it in the chat. Um, feel free to just duplicate it. Um, Pakita na rin natin kung paano ba siya i-duplicate. So yung second link na lang daw na sina ni Aiden. So go to the dun sa upper, dun sa top part ng... Um, ayun, dun sa top part ng nav bar, and then click nyo lang yung duplicate dyan. Ayun. So, ganun lang siya. And if you guys haven't created your um, Figma accounts yet, go ahead and do it now. Um, yung first part pa naman, wala pa namang masyadong kailangan. There's not much to play around, so it's definitely gonna be fine. Alright. Okay. Seeing people in the Figma file. <laughs> That's cute. Alright. Anyway, 
Sige. So, I guess we can move on the lang. And so, without further ado, let us begin the landing page part. Ayun. So, nandito na tayo sa landing page. Sige. So, next slide. Kumbaga. Ayun. Okay, okay. So, ano ba, ano ba yung ano, mga nasa landing page? So, before... So, ayun. May mga tooltips rin kami dyan. Pero hindi na namin i-discuss yung pinaka-first part dun sa taas. Kasi hindi um, naman siya super relevant dun sa... Um, pag the design in a way so we would definitely go and check it out um very um useful for naman siya ayan so i guess we can start dun sa drafts let's go left to right okay so drafts ano ba yung drafts so dito yung mga projects i guess that you did alone so for gagawa ka ng project at you just click design file tapos magla-land siya dun sa drafts mo and aside from that it's also where you, the, it's also the stuff it's also the files that you duplicated so yung kanina dinuplicate niyo tong file na to diyan siya nag-land diyan sa drafts mo All right, and then hindi namin nalagin ng tooltip pero yung recent is just basically everything that you've opened so far. Like I think even if you haven't edited it, it's just gonna pop up there. Jensa recents. All right, so going down below drafts is community. So what is community? That's where all the good stuff is. Like it's a gold mine of resources. So it's a place where the Figma community just drops amazing templates, plugins, etc. So parang Thank you talaga sa mga Figma natives sa pag-drop ng mga resources dyan. Ang dami talagang resources dyan. Kasi pwede kang, either you're doing a UX UI project, graphic design project, kahit illustration, kahit maghanap ka ng illustration dyan. Kahit hindi ka designer, there's just really something to see there sa community. And if you're a designer, it just makes your work like 10 times faster with whatever stuff that they um, have there in the community. So I really encourage everybody to check out community Um, after this um, workshop so to make your workflow like like so much easier all right so you're in vouch now <laughs> all right so below that we have the team section so ano ba yung team i guess better straightforward and chat ayun team pero i like to think of the team as like a place where things can be more organized so for example let's say dito sa ux dc dev 21 team So everyone part of that team has access to the files jan at ng projects natin it's all I mean, it's all there and Ayun, so everybody who's part of UXDC Dev is part of that team, and then all the files that we're working on are also there. And even if you're working alone, it's fine also to create a team because it just makes everything more organized. So, so for example, lang is yung Nestle file na jensa team na jensa taas. That was me working solo for like all the graphic design stuff I had to do for them, and it just makes your files like much more organized. And if you have a design system, at least everything is there already. And Yun, parang easy access to everything related to whatever project you're working on. Ayun. So yun yung team, Jin Chan, yung useful for organization. And ayun. So next is yung super big square. That's all of the files that you've accessed. And yeah, that you've accessed in general. So ayun, uh, medyo straightforward din siya. Parang yun na talaga yung mga files. It's easy to click on them and then pwede ka na magbukas ng bagong file from that. All right. So let's go to the right side. Okay. So, yun yung imports. Ano ba yung imports? So, yun yung for the .pig files that you probably downloaded from online. So, siguro yung instance na maisip ko is like, for example, nandun ka sa YouTube, naghanap ka ng Figma tutorial, ganun. Tapos, nagsabi ng YouTube, parang, oh, check out the link below for like resources. And then, download ka ng .pig file from there para you can um, go along with the tutorial. And then, ayun. So, now that you have that .pig file, you can like import it into your Figma and then work on it dyan sa web app. So, ayan yung, ayan yung um, kumbagang, um, purpose ng import. Not sure if you could import pictures as well, but like, as far as I haven't tried that yet, but as far as I know, dot .pig files are definitely um, where you can import that into your um, Figma file. Uh, Figma, sorry. All right. And then below that is the create new file. So, my design file and my big jam file. So, yung design file is what we're going to be working on today, yung mga... Um, kung gagawa ka ng mga UX UI projects or the graphic design projects, like that's what you're gonna click. But if you're gonna, if you want to work on like, ayun, magda-diagram ka or need something similar to Miro, then that's FigJam. So FigJam is like collab a collaborating tool. Um, yun, you can create diagrams. Um, whiteboarding is it's a really good um, tool also for planning stuff also. And we created a cool feature for me na they just recently released was the one where you could code with everybody that really helps you with my cs classes because like we can all code together at big jam so ayun yan yung dito sa landing page 
all right so i hope that was not too much to take in <laughs> but like yeah uh, definitely it's fine if um you did not remember everything there so you can just really check them out later on and this file is here for you <laughs> all right so let's move on to the workspace part okay ayun. so let us move on to the next one all right, so here is the workspace. So bear with me again. The metro mahaba and then your explanation dito sa workspace. So let's start from the top and then then let's go down left to right later on. All right, so itong menu, that Figma symbol over there the side. Yes, that one. That's where you can see the file, edit, view, object, etc. That's similar to Photoshop Illustrator. They also have that. I think even Google Docs has that also. So I think that should be pretty easy in the spot. And that's also where you can find your plugins. Plus, you can also find that's how you can go back to that landing page where we were at earlier um, via back to back to files. Ay, bakit malajan sa ano ni Aiden? Pero nandyan, nandyan, nandyan siya sa akin yung back to files. Uh, pero anyway, um, moving on, katabi ng menu is our tools. So may mga frame tool, shape tool, pen tool, text tool. If you've used Illustrator, Photoshop before, I think that should be very... Um, easy to i mean that should be very familiar to you already ganon tapos um katabi non is the mask tool component tool actually uh, marami pang ibang tools dyan, depending on what you click so umi iba talaga yung interface pero ayun tools rin siya on like um to help you with your projects as well ayun so ayun makikita mo siya na iba may iba siya depending on like what you um click ayun all right so we won't delve too deep into that for now, so let's move on to layers and assets tab. Okay, so yung layers tab is basically ayun, similar again to Photoshop and Illustrator. If nakagamit na kayo ng Photoshop and Illustrator, that's where everything basically is like on your file. So like your text, your shapes, um, frames, everything, it's on your layers and like everything you've used and added into this file, that's what it is. And then dun sa asset tab naman, yan yung parang kawari, siguro if let's say a UX, UX UI project, yan yung mga buttons for mga components that you've used, um, yun, pati mga illustrations ng dyan siya. So that's everything that you know, parang you need to keep reusing and reusing again. It's like your assets for a UI project. Siguro if we're turning this into like a graphic design project, then it's gonna be like you know, illustrations that you guys have to, are gonna keep reusing and reusing. And you can just find them in your assets. But of course, you have to build that on your own in the man. So you can create a design system so that, you're, so that you can like um, use them as assets for your project. And then so if you're below that, na lang, we have one last thing to discuss is the page section. So I like to think of the page section as like um, Excel tabs or like um, ano ba? G Sheets tabs. Ayan, yeah, so you can like go around them. It's like a blank slate for every page that you create. So I really think that's super useful, especially if you're working on like one big project and then you wanna like <clears throat> divide them into certain like parts so you can um, um, easily organize them thanks to pages. So I feel like this is such a big, um, ano ba, such a big help when it comes to projects and organization for your stuff. Ayun, so there we have it then let's move on to the right side of this file so at the yung property section this is basically where you can edit everything um you can edit your mga text your shapes your frames etc all of that that's where you can um edit everything there so i won't dive too deep into that but that's basically where you can control everything yeah so an agenda on the right side okay so let's move on yes ayun Let's move on then sa third. Okay. Ooh, I'm hoping I hope I'm not going too fast, but if I am, I'll try to slow down. All right. So let's then let's stay then sa left side muna. Okay, so components, instance, frame, shape, group, image. Like what are those? I won't get I won't go too deep into that, but basically these are definitely terms that you would need to remember so that you'll be able to um, when you work on your project, it's easy for it's it would be it would be really helpful for you to remember them. So I think yung shape sa kayong image, medyo easy to know naman for yung mga frames, group, components. We'll be talking about that later. So don't worry, guys. <laughs> we will get there. <laughs> All right. So moving on to the one on the right. So dito sa taas, itong mga x and y axis, etc. cetera. Dyan yung, dyan yung parang pwede kang mag-edit or adjust to mga shapes or frames mo. So anything that looks like a shape 
of some sort, like even your images, since it's like in a shape, like a, for example, a, rectang a rectangular shape or a square shape, that's where you could edit like everything there. So I won't discuss them one by one since you can definitely like explore them, but that is what that part is for. And then sababa nun is, is the text. So I think very straightforward again, since I'm sure everybody has um, used something similar to this, whether it be Google Docs or Photoshop, um, that's where you can adjust your fonts, your size, text size, etc., text weight, and the paragraph spacing, text alignment. lahat. So nandun rin siya sa right side, right, right sidebar. Okay. Ayan. Ayan, yan. Nandun siya. Okay. So ayan lang for that right sidebar. Don't need to uh, delve too deep into that once again. So para ano kasi ang dami talaga nangyayari diyan and then dito sa itong part ito yung nasa baba so i think yung one thing that i really want to highlight lang talaga here is the saving part because i've seen people ask like, wait how do i save um files dito sa figma because like i think in other um documents you go to the upper right dun sa may, for example dun sa figma file. i thought it was there also at the start pero hindi pala siya dyan. um that's how you this is this is the place where you can save your um, files or frames. Actually, I wouldn't even say files because your files are automatically saved. This is where, for example, you have you created like um, a project, like a let's say a wireframe or like a or like a PubMed, and you want to save it on your desktop. This is where you save it, and you can even change the size. You can even change the file type. So ayun, dyan siya sa baba. Hindi lang siya super obvious, but now you guys know where it is. <laughs> All right. Okay. So that's it for the um, workspace part. Ayan, definitely uh, explore, explore nyo na lang din siya since super dami talagang ganap <laughs> Okay, all right. So let's move on to the design part. Designing with Figma. Okay, all right. So here we are. All right. So yung first thing that we're going to be talking about is frames versus groups. So before we even establish, like, why is there this debate of, like, frames versus groups, we have to first discuss, like, what is a frame and what is a group. So actually, um, the reason why there's a debate lang din pala is because um, they have similar, they can be similar in some, like the, 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 their purpose can be similar, like grouping stuff and like framing stuff together. Because it's like you're also grouping stuff when you're framing stuff. So that's the reason why there's a debate. But before that, once again, <laughs> yung, ano ba yung frame? So um, before that, yung frame is the one on the top bar. Ayun, yes, that one. That's how you make a frame. Or you can just click F and then it will just appear. And yeah, then you click and then drag how big you want it to be. Ganun. And then on the side, as you can see, dyan sa um, screen ni Aidan, may parang mga templates na. So kung gagawa ka ng wireframes like iPhone, um, ayun, yun, ayun, mga iPhone, mga um, desktop, tablet, it's all, there's like a bunch of templates there as well to help you um, if ever you're going to create wireframes for like certain sizes already. So you don't have to like search them all up like one by one. Like, oh my gosh, what's the size of this um, iPhone or like the size of this Android phone? So nandiyan siya. So ayun. And then, ano pa bang pwedeng gawin sa frame? So frames are also like artboard. If you've used Illustrator before, art, ready siyang artboard. And then, siguro if you just, you painted before, it's like a canvas, basically. Yeah, but like, because... The, but like the frames are like super powered canvases because you can also use them to create like small shapes, like squares, rectangles, even. And you can even create like um, ovals using frames. So, ayun siya. So, aside from that, rin pala, um, ayun, as I mentioned earlier, yung pagka group ng mga stuff. So, you can also use frames to group items, such as the examples that we have below. So, um, parang pwede siyang group, pwede rin siyang frame. Pero kailan mo bang gagamitin yung group? And kailan mo bang gagamitin yung frame? Diba? Kasi yung group, parang ginagroup ko rin yung items together to make things more organized. And if you frame stuff, that pretty much has the same purpose as well. So just to make it like super duper, like easy to remember, you use frames kung gagamit ka for like a UX, UI project or any project that you need to have things like be consistent or like where you really care about the placement of things. But like if you're using it for like graphic design or like illustration, illustration, then you can definitely use groups instead. Because hindi naman nagmamatter yung parang consistency when we use it for graphic design. So yun, yun yung pinaka simplest explanation ng frames versus groups um, at, our, at our level right now. I'm sure there are like so many other like use cases for it, but like that's like the easiest way to remember it right now. 
All right. So can we go to the right side? Kung ano ba yung difference ng if you group stock versus if you frame stock. So kore, let's make that smaller. Yung group one. Yung square is the groups. Okay, so when you make it smaller, parang everything just we get smaller, and even the spaces in between it get smaller also, the back. But if we use frames, parang tinga mo kung lumiit pinaliit natin. Parang same for nsa, like it's just that parang lumiit yung parang mga payat yung rectangles, but the space in between is still the same. So yun yung parang beauty of frames, so parang especially if you're using it for like um dun sa website mo, sabo kung or magcreate ka ng table for a website, ganon. Parang it's so easy to um. Make things consistent with each other, and then, for example, you want to add something in between them, like an additional rectangle. Ayun. So it's like boom, it's so easy. So we can achieve this using auto layout, which Aiden will be teaching later on. So ayun, ayun yung parang main difference niya. Tapos let's have another example. Then then para sa baba, para medyo mas real life yung example. So kawari, if a frame, let's the, the first example is a frame navbar, and then sa baba is per group siya. So if frame, why it? Parang you want to make it a bit fatter, yung frame. Let's say you want to make that number a bit fatter. Then, ayun, it's still just staying there in the center, and nothing is really affected because we constrained it to like the center, so it's just really staying there. So group someone, but they're more in shape constraints. Pero tingnan mo yung iyan. Hindi na naging wonky siya. So parang lalo na kapag vectorize, it gets really annoying. So like before, I didn't know any vectors. I would just keep using groups since I was a, and then my background's in graphic design. So parang I'm I'm more Ano ba? Like I'm more familiar with groups. I just kept using that, and then every time I would make like wireframes, like na iimi sa ako when the icons become like weird and I want to keep like I would have to like ano ba? I would have to adjust them like one by one. It took up, took up so much time, so I didn't know that the solution was frames. So now you guys know before you even start a project that frames is the solution if you're working on wireframes, or else you'll, you're gonna waste so much time like trying to um, adjust things one by one and waste your frustrations. <laughs> All right, so in now for frames versus groups, um, yeah. Once again, TLDR, um, frames, your theory projects, or if you want to use it for slides, groups for like graphic design or illustration. Okay, so let us move on to shapes. So this is the fun part. So ayan, so we added like so many different shapes here, and you know maybe you're wondering like, oh my gosh, Nicole, how do I make those like half donuts and that star with so many rays? So that's actually really easy to make. So the pinaka base not in the shape is the circle, uh, rectangle or the square, or um triangle and the star. But if you wanna adjust, like for example the star, and then you wanna ayun, nandyan pala siya. Like sorry, I forgot to mention that the it's on the upper, it's right beside the frame tool, jan sa um top bar. Okay, ayun. So back to the um let's let's try let's try going to the star first. So for example, then gumawa gumawa tayo ng star. Ayan. Okay. So, ayan yung star. So, how do we make it like more? How do we have more rays to it? So, ayan lang siya sa right bar actually. Um, ayan. Oh, pwede, pwede mo rin siyang ganyan. Parang i-drag mo. Ayan. So, ayan pala yung shortcut mo. Pwede mo siyang i-drag. Pero if you, pero parang yung paggawa ko is ayan siya sa right bar and then you can just increase the number to how many you want. This these kinds of designs are like super trendy right now. Some of pubs I noticed. So, ayun ganon lang ganon lang siya kasimpleng gawin here in Figma. So, ayun boom, we already have the trendy shape thing. <laughs> yeah, and then um below that for the donut half donut naman yun yeah that one um super easier in siyang gawin. So we first start with the base shape, which is a circle or the ellipse now, and then ayun may may tiny circle jan sa side. Ayan. Tapos pwede mo siyang gawin parang Pac-Man, yung arc. Uh-oh. Pwede mo siyang gawing Pac-Man. You just drag that thing. Uh-oh. Tapos, how do you make the hole in the middle? Ayan. So, you just click that middle one and then ito drag mo rin siya. Ayan. So, ganun lang siya ka-simple. Parang, ayan, ito drag, drag mo lang siya. Ganun. And then the third, the third circle dun sa right side is for rotating. And, but you can also adjust the rotation dun sa right side. So that's actually how simple it is to make those kinds of shapes. All right. So now that um, mas ayun. Sige, last thing pala yung corner radius. Ayun. Paano ba siya? Paano? How do you make it like more like fat or like rounded? Yeah, you just adjust it dun sa corner radius dun sa dun sa right side bar. So I guess basically everything that you need to adjust is in the right side bar, except for the one where you want to make a hole in the middle. Wala ata siya dun sa right side. If I'm not wrong. Oh, nandiyan rin siya. Okay. 
dyan pala siya. Perfect. Ayun. So, everything is literally there. <laughs> Ayun. Sa right sidebar. Okay. So, sige, baba tayo dun sa free uh, masking part. Okay. Ayun. So, itong part na to, um, basically, you just get, paano ba, paano ba namin ginawa na um, Patrick is like, inside like a bunch of shapes. So, it's really easy. You just get a random photo in. So, for example, we're using the same Patrick photo. <laughs> Okay, ayan. And then you put any shape behind it. Like, literally any shape. <laughs> okay, magkawa tayo ng any random shape. Ayan, sige, ayan. So, you just put that rectangle. Tapos, kailangan mong, ayan. Okay, tapos isi-send mo siya to back. Um, paano ba siyang isend to back? Right-click lang, ganun. Pwede mong i-right-click. Hindi ko sure kung ano yung, ano, yung shortcut niyan. Pero pwede mong, ayan, yung, ano pala, tawag oh, dito. I forgot what that's called. <laughs> yung ganyan. Uh, brace ba? Tama. I'm not sure. Pero ayun, ganun siyang, yeah, yung brace yun. Tapos, after that, imam, pwede mo siya i-mask using that go sa taas, yung top bar. Yung sa top bar. Yan, boom, boom. Okay, and yun. So, mask na siya. Ganun lang siyang, ganun lang ganun. You can also do it sa, um, right, via right clicking as well. But to make it easy, dyan lang siya sa taas. Okay. Alright. So, Yun lang for shapes. And then I guess you can you guys can also like asynchronously um try to do it with the duplicated file. Nyo. I'm kinda sad we can't see everybody like um trying it out down down there, but like ayun, kasi nagka-crash talaga yung file. So yun. for now we just have to sacrifice. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to the typography part. Okay, so wait lang. Ah, all right. Ito na yung typography part. So What's this about? So basically, ayun lang, mga font, mga text, yun, yun, ganun lang siya. And then, ayun. So for example, may hello dyan. Pwede mong i-change yung mga um, size. Pwede mong i-change yung mga font dyan. Um, using, yeah, comic sans. Yes, we love that. <laughs> ayun. So, ayun. Ganun lang siyang kadaling gawin. And then the, the shortcut for using text is letter T. You just click T and then you can type already. Yeah, or in the top bar. Yes. And then you might be wondering, like, why do we have that, like, hello, 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 hello on the left side? So um, we have that because um, when we're working on UX, UI projects, it's super, it's much better to have everything consistent. So we wanted to create, like, a, paano ba, parang my, head, my certain um, size for a certain heading, my certain size for a certain body, ganon. Parang that would just make your workflow easier and, like, hindi ka na mag-iisip kung ano ba yung mga... Um, sizes that you want to use. And how did we generate this? We used this plugin called Typescales. So there's the tip. Um, definitely check that plugin out para mas mabilis yung workflow mo. Ayan. Pero if you want to explore, explore in. Um, kahit hindi ka munang gumamit ng plugin so that you can explore like everything dyan sa um, software. But once, you, once you're going to start your project, you can use like these kinds of um, tips or these plugins para mas mabilis yung workflow mo. All right. So moving on to images. So, super simple lang. Dito sa images, um, dito sa images, basically, yung point lang is, pwede mo siyang i-edit. So, click ka lang doon sa right bar, and then lalabas yung drop-down na yan. So, in super simple lang niya. Yung gusto lang namin i-point out here is you can edit your images even here on Figma. So, ayun. For example, yun, pwede mo siyang i-edit. Ganun. Ayun. So, yan lang yung for images, kumbaga, parang pwede mo lang siya i-edit, edit. Yeah. Alright. So, dyan sa baba ng file na to, ah, sorry, ng artboard, ng frame, sorry, frame na to, this is what you could do with some of your images. Like, you can create that, like, maraming patricks, ganun, in like one click, actually. Um, dyan siya sa, paano ba, dyan, dyan, dyan siya sa one of the, um, how dyan? One of the stuff sa drop down, one of the options yung sa drop down. Um, under ayun, ayun, image and then yung sorry fill yeah the style so you can change it into like a bunch of patricks. Ayun. so yun lang yun lang yung gusto naming ipakita sa inyo for this for this part sa images. All right, so let's move on to the next part, yung effects. So the effects is super useful, especially if you're creating UI because I'm not sure if you know this, but a lot of the buttons right now have like those drop shadows at the back and the cards all have drop shadows at the back. 
sorry, this is how you're able to create them. So you just go to effects and then go to drop shadow and then ayun, dyan sa baba, yes, that one. And then you can easily um, edit like how spread out you want your shadow to be, clicking via clicking the sun. You can make it, you can even change the color. You can change how high it is, how low it is, etc. So ayun yung cool part ng um, Figma na super easy to create these um, drop shadows and stuff. Yeah. And then, ayun, pati pag, pag yung square name, parang naka-emboss siya, inner shadow lang yung tawag ka. So, similar rin siya sa Photoshop Illustrator, may ganyan yun. Pero I feel like, mabagal kasi dun sa Photoshop and Illustrator dito sa Figma, parang sabang seamless niya. So, I guess that's what I like about it here as well. Alright. So, yun lang for the effects. And then, alright. So, let us move on to the last part that I will be sharing for you guys today before I pass it on to Aidan. It's going to be its style. So, just to be really quick, here's the styles. Um, why did we decide to like put this in also? Because this is this these styles really help you with your workflow. So, for example, these text styles and color styles, once you created like a certain heading, for example, um, no, 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 let's, let's start from top. Like, for example, you have a text and then let's say you want to make your heading like size 100 points then on yeah for example ayun, let's say 96 ayun. and then you want to make you want to like keep using it again and again this is where text styles and color styles like come in really handy so you can create them by using um ayun, may mga steps to dyan, like that um the four circles dyan sa right tapos if click mo lang yung plus ayun, tapos ito type mo lang yung new style Ayan, Aiden's heading. Okay, ayan. Tapos after you do that, nandiyan na siya, I'm pretty sure. Yes. Ayan, nandiyan na siya sa mga headings mo. And then you can keep using Aiden's heading again and again and again. That's that's the cool part of um, styles. And in sa colors, it's the same lang din naman. Na parang paulit-ulit lang siya. Na paulit-ulit pa siyang gamitin. And the process is just exactly the same. Except you're gonna like color pick a color muna or something like that. And then you'll be able to create your color styles. So what the good part of color styles is that you don't need to keep on like using the eyedropper tool again and again. And because that makes your work to just parang ang tagal talaga, if ever, or like may color kung gusto mong gamitin, tapos hindi mo pa siya nagagamit dun sa project mo. But you have to keep using it again and again. It's so much easier to have it just on the side and ayun, and have all of them um, there already for you. So for example, here we have Aiden's Red <laughs> already. And it's there. So you can just use that or use a different color that we've already added into our color styles. All right. So yun lang. Yun lang yung part. Yun lang yung mga stuff that we want. Yun, some tips we wanted to share about um, Figma, Gen's side ko. So now we're going to move on to Aiden's part on constraints and grids. He's also going to talk about auto layout and components. Ayan. So take it away. Hey done and thank you so much guys. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much, Nicole. Yes, very, very quick and easy onboarding to Figma. I'm very, very sure that all of our participants are exploring in their duplicated files right now. And let's just give them a few more tips on, I guess, organization and I guess um um like alignment and everything. So that all starts with, I would say, the grid section. So where do we use grids? You can only use grids inside of frames in Figma. So clicking the F tool here, I'll make a new frame. And as you can see, it's, it shows up here in the layout grid portion. Now, when you make a grid, there are three options that Figma gives you. We have grid, columns, and rows. So let me click the plus button here. And as you can see, there first pops up is a grid, and it's eight points. Um, that's the gold standard, I would say, for UX UI. We always use the eight-point grid um, for easy translation into development. But that's for a topic for another day. Let's um, stay focused on, I guess, like what we can do here in Figma. So. As we can see here, we start with grids. And as and when you click on these nine boxes here, you see that there's an option for a drop-down menu. And this is where you access either your columns and your or your rows. So for grids, you can always change the size of the grids. It can be eight points. And then you can also change the color. And you can also change like the opacity of those grids. So for example, for this column, if we have this column here, we can have like, let's say if we want um 10 columns. Now we have 10 columns and they're all stretched throughout the frame. But um, with this, we also, oh wait, oh, wait, let me rephrase. Let me, before I talk about like, I guess like all, all this got there in margin, let me go, let me show you first that there's also rows, which is basically columns, but horizontal now. Okay, now let's go to what we have here. What, what, what's the function of a margin 
and a gutter. So a margin, uh, I'll use columns for this. So for a margin, this is the distance that the, that the columns have, that the set of columns have between the edges of the frame. And this takes, into, takes it into consideration like the left and the right side, not necessarily the top portion. Na. So for example, if you, had a, if you had a margin of like, let's say 24, it, as you can see, there's like 24 pixels. If you want to count, ayun, one, two, three, no, I won't count it for you, but the 24 pixels right here from this column to the edge of the frame and from this column to the edge of the frame. As you can see from, from last time, lumiit din yung frame because it, because it's set to stretch with the size of the frame. So it tries to maintain that margin and that gutter, which is basically the distance between the columns or rows, um, as you stretch and as you shrink or stretch the frame. As you can see, it maintains that distance. And I guess we also drop lang here sa um sa baba, some I guess useful um some useful standards for um columns and grids for different device sizes. So we have the three devices that you would use for I guess a website. Um we have desktop, tablet, and phone. And um their um their most common use sizes. So uh, here we have 1440 by 800. And as you can see here, we made styles for that as well. You can also make styles for grids. And we edited it, it here. As you can see, I'll show you the properties here. And so as you can see, it is 12 columns that are stretched with a margin of 120 and a gutter of 24 in between. As you can see, this follows once again the eight point grid or as close to that as possible. Um, that way we can, that way we're still translating it easily into development. Um, for iPad, it has it has it has its own properties over here, and and over here is a phone. We also have our own styles for it. Um, Shamper in your duplicated file, you can explore this also by yourselves. You can um see how it how it's used in different um designs and the like. Yeah. So here here's what it looks like on like let's say a website. So as you can see, um. It's good to have this column because you you take into consideration um some white space that you want the website to have to let it breathe so it's not really like to the edge of your screen while you're viewing it and so that's some use cases that we have for that now something that we have here is what you like to call constraints so using this picture that we've sliced into four different quadrants let's show you guys what we have here so the constraints panel is over here on the right right hand side and you can see that that you can edit the constraints of like here horizontally and vertically and as you can see, what we have here for this one is it's at the left and top. This one is at the left and bottom. This one to right and top. This one to right and bottom. So if we try to edit the frame here, as you can see, what happens is, is that it's sticking to the edge of the frame that we set it to. Or it's maintaining that same distance. So let me retain it to its original position and let me try to um, edit it. So let's say we, fix, we adjust the frame, the pictures inside, inside this frame. As you can see, um, using this for example, you see these dashed lines and it's inside of a frame. You see these dashed lines are the distance of the picture, this, this particular object inside this frame to the end of the frame. So as you can see, while I'm holding option tool, while I'm holding the option key, or I guess the alt key, I think on PC, you can see that this it shows the distance between the object and the uh, outer edges of the frame. And what Figma does with constraints is that it retains that, um, it retains that constraint. It will anchor it in a sense. So since it's anchored to the left and top, if we try to anchor it to the left and top, it will, it will automatically like stick to that and it will always maintain those distances. So um, that's um, a brief little introduction on constraints and we can Try, you can try it out here. You can try playing around with like, let's say what happens if I make this right and bottom, right bottom, pala. not top, bottom, right and bottom. So if you do that, um, let's try to adjust it this way. So it will try to stick to the right and bottom of the frame as you make the frame bigger. And so you can play, play around with that in your duplicated files. And um, once again, you can either leave a, leave a, a question in the chat or in the notion forms as well okay now where can we use i guess constraints and grids in like a real life scenario so let me give you a more abstract example first so as you can see here we have a a frame 
that has a bunch of rectangles inside it. And what we did to, to each rectangle is that we set its, its horizontal constraint to scale. So what that does is, uh, if you see I'm extending the length of the frame, you can see that the frame, the frame is, I guess, um, the, the rectangles pala inside. They're getting bigger as the width, their width is getting bigger as I increase the width of the frame as well. So with with that, with that, you you may think that um that's like a good, I guess, um issue to solve, I guess, responsiveness in a website. But um one thing to, to take into consideration with this workaround is that if once you increase this, so here's the base, um, here's the base frame now. Um the distance between each rectangle, as you can see, is 34. Now let's try extending it again. As you can see, it also increased to 54. Now, this isn't good for um, I guess, responsiveness because you're not you're not staying to that eight-point grid or that um that distance that you initially set as your baseline. And you and you you ideally want that to be the same. No, you want the distance between each child item inside of a frame or each item in general. Anything that you're making a wireframe out of, you want it to be the same distance between each other. So how do you how do we possibly do that? So let's try making the constraints the one to the left and right side because we want to maintain the same distance, right? But if we set that to all of the um, rectangles inside, what will happen is that it will start to overlap. So that's not um, an ideal situation either. We don't want it to overlap because that defeats the whole purpose. It doesn't show. Um, responsiveness, it shows that um, it's overlapping. That, that's not responsive at all. Now, let's try something the man, that, uses, that uses constraints and columns at the same time. A layout grid, for, for example. So what we have here is we have a rectangle that is constrained to left and right. And it is also set to, um, to have three columns because we have three three rectangles inside here, no? And contrary to what we have a while ago, so let's say this one, you can see here that there are blue lines, there are blue lines like um, on the edges of the of the frames over here, right? Like if I try to, oh no, oh my can't select it. Uh, Okay, I guess technical difficulties. Ayan. Yeah, okay. Here. Ayan. Here are the dashed lines now that we were talking about a while ago. If you click on this one, naman, there are no horizontal dashed lines. Actually, there are dashed lines, but like, let me make this smaller. They're just sticking to the edges of the columns. And what, what Figma does when you're, when you're using columns and you're using... Um, uh, constraints at the same time. What it does is, is it assigns those constraints to the edges of the columns instead of the um, actual objects inside. Um, this is granted that the the layout grid is set to stretch and not and you're not giving it a um, alignment, so to say. Because when you set an alignment, you also have to set the manual width of the column. So let's say let's try that here. So let's say uh, you want it to be uh, 64 or something. As you can see, lumiit yung yung columns ng sobra and and bumalik na yung uh, dash lines to the edges of the frame. So balik natin yung columns to um, stretch. And so now it's set to auto. So now what this does is that it will try to it will um, stretch the frame because it's trying to maintain that same distance between the column. But given that the columns have a set distance between each other, the distance between each each item inside is going to be the same as well. So you've achieved like a responsive um, feature of like a bunch of blocks together, and you were able to um, have them all at the same time. I would say. Now, where's the real life use for this? So let's say we have um, these cards in the in a typical desktop frame. So. Um, let's say we want to make it um, bigger. Let's say we want it in a 4K frame or something. So as you can see, the cards will start to enlarge as you are enlarging the, the frame itself because you're using cards that are constrained to, to, the, to this column and the column is set to stretch. 
So given that you are stretching and adjusting it, you can see that it's a, it's a responsive layout maintaining that distance between each other. So like I said, this is very, very useful for the development of your product because at the end of the day, if we can't design something that can't be coded or is um, unsustainable to code, it doesn't, it, it makes for a product that um, may not even come to life, um, I guess, dev side, no? All right. Um, and one last thing I guess that we want to show in Figma is the prototyping feature. So I have here two frames now. And we want to, um, given that Figma is a, um, Figma is a tool for, I guess, UX, UI, part of that is like showing how to interact with that. And one way to interact with it is, of course, through clicks and everything in between. So let's say um, we have this now. We have these two frames, one that's just a bunch of gray circles and blue circles that resemble a smiley face. How do we want to show that um, in Figma? So as you can see, there's three on the right, side, right hand side, there's design, prototype, and inspect. Let's talk about prototype here. All right. So now we see the four anchor points that you can use to stretch. No? But one thing that came up here is this plus icon. If we drag it over here, what opens up is an interactions, interaction details form over here. So this is the action that you want to do. So on click, on drag, while hovering, mouse enter, blah, 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 blah. Let's start with click now. This is the most, this is the most basic one that we have. So on click, we want it to navigate, or I guess in this case, like change, navigate or change to this iPhone SE. So, and then over here, we have like a set of animations. Um, our favorite is Smart Animate, but let's try some things that we are particularly um, familiar with. So let's try Move In. We can have it move in from the right, the top, the left. We can have it um, push. Um, we can have it slide. And there's uh, a lot of these are like a, a bunch of like PowerPoint things that we're very used to. And I, and I guess um, we can also set this one to, I guess, on click. We can set it to slide in back, right? Now, how do we want to, to see this? Um, over here on the top hand bar, top, top bar, I would say, we have this play button. And this, this play button shows that this is the flow that will be playing. These sets of interactions will be playing in this new window that, that Figma just opened up. So, so as you can see, this is what we made a while ago. And if I click it, it moves in to reveal this. So pretty decent naman for, for like PowerPoint type to. But one cool thing about Figma, so again, let me remove all of these using the minus, clicking the minus button over here. Dragging this here and clicking, let's say, Smart Animate. And I guess I'll drag this here, Smart Animate again. And now let's try that again. Takes just a while to load. And here. And so what Figma does is that granted that, I guess I'll show you the layers panel over here. Uh, yeah. So looking at these at these layers panels, you can see that um, these are all ellipses um, named accordingly. Same thing here. These are all ellipses named with the same names. So what Figma does, um, given two different frames that have um, the same object in them with different properties. So for example, this is ellipse thirteen. This is also ellipse thirteen. So what it did is that it it was able to to smartly animate, I guess, hence the name, the X and Y properties of the different things inside. No? It was able to um, make a transition for, let's say, Ellipse 13 for to move from here to here in the next slide. And um, what you have to keep in mind lang is that this works, this works only if that they're named exactly the same. Um, if like they're in a different, if you, but like, let's say if you put these in a group, it's not going to work anymore because that's not the same layout that you have here. No? So um, just keep that in mind when you want to use Smart Animate to make something just like this for some neat animations that I would say you can use in your designs moving forward. And so quick little tips for prototyping, but we can definitely go deeper in, a, in another session with that. But for now, let's talk about some really, really other cool things that Figma has to offer, such as auto layout. So... What is auto layout? So thanks to figma.help.figma.com, auto layout is a property you can add the frames and components, and it lets you create designs that grow to fill or shrink to fit and reflow as their contents change. This is great because when you want to add new layers, accommodate longer text strings, or maintain alignment as your designs evolve. So how do you use it? All right. 
So the slides are talking to me and it's telling me to try it. So using so clicking on this um button text layer here, I can hit Shift A and it adds as you can see in the layers panel, it added this pause looking icon over here. Now what does that do? Going back to the design panel over here, it it opens this um auto layout function here. You can also add auto layout by clicking on the um, plus icon over here. Now, what are all these things over here now uh, in this auto layout panel? Um, what you can see here is that is different things like direction, spacing between items, padding, alignment, yada, yada, yada. Um, before I do that, inside of a frame, you can treat this similarly to any frame that we make. So for example, when you make a frame, you can change the, the, the fill, you can change its corners if you want it to have rounded corners. And so similarly, that's the same. It's the same with auto layout. It just made a frame for you, but it's a smart frame. Uh, emphasis on, I guess, smart. Yeah. Um, uh, yes. Emphasis on smart. Yeah. Uh, sorry, spaced out. Yeah. Um, because when we when we go into these other things later, I'll show you that. So let's say it told me to add a fill. So here is a fill. I'll make it uh, my red. And I want to round the corners. There. Okay. Looks pretty good now. But um, one thing that we want to change. Um, let's say it looks a bit too tight. And one way to add this is to add padding. So as you can see here in the laid, laid out um, portion of the auto layout panels, you can see that there's padding. So what is padding? That's basically the distance between um, the thing inside the auto layout frame to the edges of that frame. So as you can see, it's set to 88888. Yeah. So it's maintaining eight pixels between the edges of the frame. And we can edit that going back to the auto layout frame. So let's say we want um 24. And that looks a lot better. And it, it gives us a lot more breathing room for our button. And um if you want even like a button that has more padding on the left hand side, you can open this panel over here, which we like to call the alignment and padding um panel. Yeah. Um, we can go here and we can add like, let's say 48 and 48. So yeah, that added an, an additional 48 pixels on the left hand and right hand side. So that gives us a lot more breathing room on the left hand and right hand side for our button. So for direction, for direction, since you can't really see it here, but um, the direction of this there too, it's either um, vertically or horizontally. Um, what happens kasi is, um, when you add new layers into this auto layout frame, it will add them horizontally to the right of the frame. So let's try that. Um, inside here, this is, this is the text layer. Um, let's duplicate it, hitting Command D. We have another text layer. And, uh, and looking at the two, you can see that there's 10 pixels in between. Clicking on the auto layout frame again, you can see that there's this thing called spacing between items. That is basically the spacing between these two. And if I change the direction amount of that button, you can see that the um direction changes from top to bottom so if i keep adding and adding it will have it will keep adding a text layer called button and it will maintain that 10 layers 10 spaces 10 pixels <laughs> of distance between the two and so those that's a crash course i guess on like the different things inside the auto layout panel but where can we use it i guess um normally no so let's see an auto layout naman without um auto without auto layout now so we have it inside of a frame. There's a rectangle on top of the box. And then there's the text layer. No? And then let's say, Shemper, when we make buttons, we don't want the button shouldn't say button in the actual website. Let's say a typical one is like learn, learn more. Oh, it got off. And that's not good. So as you can see here, let's try fixing it with the frame. Um, the frame is set to clip content. And when, what that means is that it will, it will clip anything that goes outside of the frame. Yeah. Yeah, anything that moves outside of the frame. So if we turn that off, you can see that you can now see yung, the rest of the learn more. But it's still not working because the rectangle is not yet adjusted. So we can make the rectangle bigger. But now you have to take into consideration the padding once again. You have to see if it's still 16 by 16. But you can see that it's inside the frame. So now you also have to make the frame bigger. And it's just a lot of manual adjusting just to achieve this button. No, But let's try something with the auto layout. So this button is inside of an auto layout frame. And as you can see here, learn more. Yeah. 
quick and easy, you were able to do that same button in while you were just typing the word learn more. That's all you had to do. So with auto layout, you can really um, improve your workflow and, and um, make things so much faster. Let's look at something else, like a list. As you can see here, we were able to use utilize something uh, with like um, indentation. And we just turned off the auto layout for this. So this is really made with auto layout. We just turned it off. So let's say we want to add more text to this item. Uh, okay, so yeah, add more text. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, no. You can see that the, the list item is starting to overlap on top of the other thing. So you want to select both of them. You want to move it down. But then you have to move this down. And then you want to, <laughs> and then if you want to add something else, you have to do this and then do that. It's a pain, right? So let's try adding more text to this text item. So as you can see, it easily overflowed here. And if you want to add more, you can do so very, very easily. Um, one quick thing, um, to do indentation like this with auto layout, what we did here is that we have a padding of 64 pixels that way to achieve this. So using this individual um, padding is very, very helpful if you want to get nitty gritty in terms of like indentation, spacing between left and right margins and the like. So as, you, as, as if you're not yet sold with like auto layout, um, hopefully this next one sells you even more. All right. Here we have a nav bar with auto layout, right? Um, let's say we want to um, resize it because like, um, because we want our website to be used on different platforms, we want to see what the what the nav bar looks like in let's say a smaller form factor because this is more like a desktop size. So let's try shrinking it. As you can see, as I'm shrinking it, it is starting to get closer to the logo, but it also cut off. So um, let's try to fix that with constraints. We can fix that with constraints. We can set this to, um, let's say, right. So as you can see, it was able, to, you, you can achieve that, but now let's try to add, like, let's say, let's say you're actually doing a food food thing. So let's try adding food. Okay. So there's the dupe, and then we have to um, extend the frame and then make it bigger. And then, you know, so I think, I, I think it's self-explanatory how it's very hassle to make something like this get back to the, to the design that you were working with. But let's say you have something like auto layout over here. So as you can see, it's our, without even, even touching the constraints, as you can see, I didn't even touch the constraints of the individual things. It's already like um, sticking to the edges of that auto layout frame. And let's say we want to do the same thing that we did a while ago. Let's try adding that, um, that food thing. As you can see, what it did is that it just added that um, pretty instantaneously and you can add that food and it maintains that same distance that you were working with a while ago. So, um, yeah, it's very, it's a very, very smart frame that um, using the correct properties correctly, you can make very, very responsive and flexible frames and tools for your designs. Now, what else can I do with it? So here's a card. And um, let's say this is a pretty small card. We want to see what it looks like if it's horizontal. So um, one neat thing that you noticed here is that um, the text, is adjusting to the um, to the sizes of the frame. What auto layout is is natively um, used to do is that um, it adjusts to what's inside. So similar to this. So hello, hello, hello. When I keep typing, its its size is adjusting to the size of the thing inside, right? This text layer. But with this, the layers inside are actually adjusting to the layer to the size of the big layer, which is this card, right? So how are we able to achieve this? So this is where the constraints and resizing comes in with auto layout. So um, typically with something without auto layout, you just have the constraints, right? Left, top, center, blah, blah, blah. But with something like auto layout, it, it, it introduces more features to use for your, um, for your design. So let's say this text. This text is um, not adjusting. It's not making the... Um, it's not making the card adjust horizontally, but it is um, vertically because it's using something called hug content. So there are three, three features with, when using auto layout resizing. You have fixed width, meaning that um, fixed width is um, self-explanatory. It's the default in everything in Figma without auto layout. So 
um, it's fixed, meaning you can adjust the um, width and height over here. So as you can see, this, this layout over here is has a fixed, fixed horizontally, so you can edit the width. But it's set to hug contents on vertical. So what's hug contents? Naman? Hug contents adjusts to the um, layers inside of this auto layout layer. So for example, if you want to um, copy paste this text to make it a bit longer, the text the, the card resizes with that text in the card resizes because your text also enlarged also. You added more text so so vertically it had to um, it had to extend as well. So with that, you can see that the um, auto layout is trying to hug and maintain the least amount of distance possible between the layers inside and the size of its of itself, no, of its layer, its height vertically. Vertically, it's trying to maintain um, the same, the least amount of distance between the two. And what about fill container, no man? So that's what this um, text layer is set here vertically. So it's going to so as you extend this here, so currently its width is set to um, 349. But then when we extend it, it is now set to 967. It's, it's doing that because this inner container is set to 967. So this text inside is also set to 967. It's trying to match the width of that inner container. And given that, you can create some responsive cards that will adjust with the different sizes that you want to experiment with. So that's that's another neat tool um, with auto layout. Its responsiveness and its ability to create responsive and flexible designs is very, very useful. But one thing that I want to capitalize on in UX UI design is the concept of consistency. How you want everything to be um, translatable and easily um, understood across different designs. And one way to do that is with this uh, with this other tool that we like to call components. Now, what are components? Once again, from help.figma.com, components are elements you can reuse across your designs, and they help to create and manage consistent designs across projects. You can create components from any layers or objects you've designed. These could be a wide range of buttons, icons, layouts, and more. So how do I use it? So using this button that we made a while ago with, with auto layout. So this is something that we can see is um, ready to be used across because it's already set um, with its properties to be um, adjusting with the length of the text inside. How do we do that? So we can select, we can right click, and we can, uh, wait, it's, I'm, <laughs> the zoom is covering my screen, wait long. Okay, wait. I think the, uh, no, 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 ito. Option Command K, there it is. Option Command K, I think Alt, Alt Control, Alt Control K for PC. So you can right click it there or use the um, command shortcut on your laptops. Sige. So now we have a component. Now what, right? So um, we discussed briefly the assets panel a while ago, but this is where it comes in. Now all of your components will start to, to pop up in your assets panel over here. So it's inside of this frame because um, all components put inside of a frame will be put inside a group named after that frame. So as you can see, this is frame four and there's a there's a component inside called the button, right? So here, we were able to right click, select, and it now has a component inside, right? So now what? Um, Nicole went over something briefly, Kanina, component versus instance. So let's grab this thing here now. This is our main component because it has the four diamond symbol over here. Let's grab that, put it over here. Yeah. So now we have a main component. Now what's an instance? So when you whenever you copy paste or duplicate something, it makes an instance of that thing. No, over here. So here's the main component. Here's the instance. What's the difference between the two? This main component is the reference for this instance. So this is the master file, I would say. And whenever you make edits to this thing, it also reflects on the instance. So let's say we change this to hello. Now this button changes to hello whenever you change this. But with the instance, whenever you change some properties, like let's say, um, let's say you want to change the text. So bye. Diba? So the two different things, uh, the two different um, uh, text layers are, are, are now different, even though it's an instance of that component. That's because these instances are, are not directly tied to, you can override some of the properties inside of these instances. So if you want to, let's say, 
make a darker thing for like darker version of the button for like a hover feature. So let's make this button again. Button and we can right click here to um, reset all overrides and we can make it dark again. Yeah. So we have two instances of the buttons, right? So that's very cool. We can um, make different iterations of the button and you can edit it as well. But um, but I think one thing that we want to address is like, um, yeah, we, we established it's a very neat feature, but one thing that we want to establish also is like the organization that we have with this issue, right? So let's say you have a bunch of components and you want to like um, make, let's try to make one that's, um, I guess, a disabled version. So let's make this gray, uh, not using color styles, let's make this gray and let's make this an even darker gray. Yeah, something like that. So we have like a default, a hover, and a disabled, something like that, right? Um, the, dif the, the difficulty with this is because whenever you're making an edit to this, it will also edit here. And it's difficult to um, like grab it from the assets panel over here because it's just going to be this. And then you'd have to, um, you'd have to edit this instance every time, diba? and that's not going to be ideal. So... Um, one thing that we can use to remedy this is something that we like to call variants. So this is an example of what variants looks like using buttons, but let's use this simple one that we made um, last time, putting it over here. Yeah. So what can variants do for you? So for example, this button, right? Um, that is a Figma. Um, itong, uh, let's say we make, um, let's say we make um, all of these um, a main component right now they're an instance right so what we can do is we can detach that instance uh you can like right click uh -huh. you can right click here or ito pala. you can click these three dots over here and detach instance or use the command shortcut option command b and so hindi na sila um hindi na sila instance as na main component but what you can do is so you can also make multiple components of that and now you have multiple components right so now you have all the different buttons that you want, right? Itong default, your hover, and your disabled. Um, but when you have something like this, you don't want that all cluttering inside of your um, assets panel over here. So what Figma has, has allowed us to do is to use something called variants that we have over here. So let's pull this from the assets panel. And as you can see, what, what's different from, like I guess, uh, this component, there's no variants over here. You can make variants, but um, let's use the one that we have already over here as an instance. So um, we made the same, a default, a, a hover, and a disabled. And let's say we want to make this the hover instance. So instead of like um, adjusting it manually to match what we have here, what we can do is we can just change the property over here. With the click, we can cycle through the different variants that we made. And um, this can be used not just for buttons. Let's say um, instead of making the nav bar over and over again for all of your different um, um, designs. You can make one. Comp you can make a variant of components for the different sizes of these navbars. So this is the desktop version, the tablet version, and the phone version. And something else that you can use with variants is make interactive components. But given our time constraints, that's a topic for another day. So um, when making variants, this is very very useful for whenever there's um, no icon, whenever it's pressed, just to have the different um, designs of that um, button. All inside of one component on the right hand on the assets panel over here, right? It's very very simple and it makes transmute making designs very very seamless using this this panel. Now, um, that's actually um, um, my part of like discussing all the different things that um, I want to talk about Figma, all the cool little features. And now let's go over to the activity. Yes, so we left this blank because we'll be explaining this to you. What we have over here is a um, landing page for a portfolio that we also grabbed off of Figma community. So yes, we are advocates of Figma community. We can use this for um, you can use this for like um, basis of your design, and we were able to make this cool little thing. So let's let's uh, uh, using the components, auto layout, uh, constraints, the text layers. We even have styles on this. We we're able to use a lot of the different things we learned in Figma to um, translate it to this um, wireframe. 
Um, it was initially like um, it didn't have any styles, it didn't have any components. So we we made this. Um, it's like a culmination of like everything that we've learned in this workshop. So clicking the, the play icon over here, you can see um, the different features that we made. So like Kanina, we made a component that was um, hover and disabled, right? So let's let's see what happens when I hover over these buttons. You can see that um, it's changing the color because we have it set to smart animate to the hover whenever I'm hovering on it over here using the prototype feature and itong mga neat little interaction. So while hovering, change to the, the smart anime. Yeah. So you can set that here and every instance will set will be set to follow that over here. Now, over here on this amazing portfolio section, you can see that we made a card section, but what's where does this um this other version come in? That comes in whenever you hover over each card. And so it shows that a read more button comes up. And that way, it allow it it calls the attention for the read, for the user to read more once they are here um hovering over the different cards. So what our activity is for this is we want you guys to make your own portfolio. It doesn't have to have anything in inside. It can be um as it can be filled with a bunch of stock images just like this one. But we want to see um. The culmination of like what you've what you've learned over here so you can fill it with a bunch of shapes a bunch of patrick star pictures using frames groups colors and styles we want to see what you guys can come up with in this world of design because in design a portfolio is a neat tool and a um, good reference for like your prowess and your skills and all of the different things that you've done as a designer moving forward right and we want to give you guys this opportunity to start that as early as now even in your beginning years it's good it's a good idea to like get a good sense of like how you want to design things your own style and keep building on it as you are moving along in your design in your journey as aspiring design leaders and i guess as as rafa said no anyone can be a design leader and it only takes the little small steps and this is a great small step to start with so i think the events sent the um form in the chat and you can be sending your figma files over there and we can be leaving we'll be leaving comments and things to things to highlight and things to improve on with your designs moving forward and we're super excited to be seeing the work that you put forward so i guess on behalf of um the uxd department i would like to thank everyone who has who has come to this workshop to um learn from us the uxd department um feel free to contact us on facebook on the ux page or you can contact me rafa and nicole uh individually on our facebook facebook uh, profiles you can also message me on ig and twitter 